Hello, hello and welcome to episode 56 of the No Excuses podcast. My name is Anne and I live in Worcestershire in England with um, my husband Tom and our dog Bertie. It's been just over a couple of weeks since I last spoke to you. It's a dull, dark day here. We've had a little bit of rain, but uh, very contrast to yesterday, which was bright, sunny, warm. If you could get out of the wind a little bit, but everything's springing up now that we're officially in spring and overall the weather is slowly improving. Um, <clears throat> now, let's just remind you of the uh, mouths that we've got running in the podcast. The Jump Along Mal ends on Friday on the 31st of March. It's any adult garment, um, really, but not something like a bralette or something that sits close to your skin that's got no sleeves, but it can be a vest that's worn on the outer. I've got um, quite a few entries, thank you very much. You can enter via email, and the details below are all below where to contact me. Um, email, Ravelry, or Instagram and thank you for those who have submitted entries so far. The other mail that will run till probably I don't know about November end of October is the smash the stash. Again I'll put the hashtag on the screen and that is anything that you've had you can make something that is um, I mean, if it's a blanket, you could have already started it. But I want you to be able to use more than 50% of um, of the yarn used in the item is has been owned by you more than six months. Okay? If you want clarification on that, don't ask. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, join in the fun. I try and do nice prizes if I can. And... Um, yeah, normally a, a mal prize will be a skein of yarn, a bag made by me, and a couple of extras. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, what have we got today? Well, we've got no finishes, because I, last time I spoke to you, I just finished my blanket. And I'll put a picture of the blanket to remind you, it might be quite heavy for the size that it is. Uh, mighty square blanket that's been knitted in two strands of four ply and I finally got around to asking Tom to weigh it for me and it weighed quite a bit and it came out that I'd used 4.5 kilometres of four ply in that blanket and it's really really nice and warm I, I must admit I've had it in the back room here with me and I was putting it on my legs when it was really cold I thought, why am I doing this when I could have it on me while watching telly at night? Uh, we tend to retire and watch a couple of hours of telly about 10 o'clock at night in the front room and I get out of my wheelchair into an armchair. And recently I've been falling asleep. I was absolutely shattered yesterday because I'd been out during the day. And I was like, good job Tom doesn't take photographs of me. Snoring me head off, probably. <laughs> But yeah, four and a half kilometres out of the house. Isn't that good? I'm really pleased. Yes, I know some crept back in again, but you know, on the balance of things, I think more's been knitted up than been um, acquired, shall we say, so far this year. Yeah, so we're going to go straight into progress because of no fish finished items. I might have something finished the next time I see you, because it'll be like the week before. If I'm doing it on a regular basis, week before Wonderwall. And I'd like to wear one of my items to Wonderwall, but it might be a bit of a push. The first thing I want to show you is my restarted worsted box seat. And I'm keeping in my IKEA bamboo bowl that uh, Tom put a cut in the front for me. Which now, as requested by me, now really irritates me. So, but this is being knit in two strand with two strands of four ply. That's all I've done this year is two strands of four ply virtually. 
and you can see I think I've got to about 10 inches now I've got all the lights on today because it's um it's quite dark and I don't know whether you can see any of the the subtle sh um, striping in there where I've changed colour I've had the same grey throughout and then I've varied the, the pink wall that I've held double with it um, and it, to my eyes I can see that it changes about here and then it's changed right at the top where I've just started using a stronger pink the grey is this beautiful um, grey days by Rose's Moments it's got it's like it looks like a high twist it's got pink brown yellow tiny tiny spots of lots of different colors in it and i had three skeins of that sorry if i just knocked you hold on three skeins of this from sal hello sal and it's the, i've renamed this sal's jumper sal's boxy on um, ravelry i made my friend's fingerless gloves the flock of birds gloves that i showed you a few weeks ago they were also in the same colour and I wish now I'd used a different colour for those but um so I could have used all three in the boxy I, so this is my second ball and that's the other one that I'm holding together with it so it's coming out to be it's quite a contrast and then I've got another pink to add into that um and I've got some more greys which I will just show you in a sec um I'll just tell you what I've been doing so on the back it's just stocking stitch and at the sides there's a little bit of a um, a panel of um, pearl with now this two stitch bit here was going to be twisted uh, like a cable a two stitch cable on every row going up but I, after about eight rows I decided I didn't like it so I undid it but consequently it's a bit loose right at the bottom still uh, whether that'll come out because obviously you must use a little bit more fabric as you're twisting them but I wasn't going to undo all these rows because they're quite long I think there's something like 200 more than 250 stitches on there and then my broken rib is just two rows of two by two a row of knit a row of pearl and that's it and that's my four rows of pattern and it just gives that little bit of interest that stops me from going mad because you know me i like a bit of variety in my knitting a, a stocking stitch project on its own doesn't really suit me let me just see if I grab this bag with other things in this is my project bag that i I can't remember who I had this off. It got lovely bunnies on it, and I think oh, no, there's no good me saying because I can't remember unless her name's inside. No, it's not, unfortunately. When I finish that wall, I'm moving on to these, um, and I've completely gone out of my head. Uh, <laughs> these are oh, I'm useless, aren't I? But I've got two skeins of this again this is from sal now this is similar gray tone but it's got a lot more purple in and it's got like an emerald green flash in it as well every now and again and a bit of darker gray in so i've got two of those that i've hound hound hand wound <clears throat> and then my next pink will be this and if i can find the names of these I will put them they'll be in my stash somewhere i think um not all everything sal gave me had ball bands on but i've tried to record it where i can and then i've got another assortment of you know bits and pieces um i might have to add up by the yoke i thought i'd try and make it a bit lighter i've got a pretty lilac there but then i'd want it to mix it with a with a you know a, a lighter green grey I mean so I might not end up using both of these up by the yoke because it might make it a bit dark had I realised and had I planned you know I like planning but I'm no good at it I would have used these at the bottom because I think overall they do come out 
slightly darker than the grey days, then I would have... Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a gorgeous house comp, popping up to me mum's type jumper. I mean, it might be quite a nice dressy jumper by the time I've finished, but I made it... Initially, I cast it on to replace my boxy that I put holes in the sleeves because I'd worn it out that was just a single strand of four ply and it was made with various BFL greens and things and uh, I had it for about three years and I wore it nearly every day in the winter and really enjoyed it so I've just cast on the heavier weight one now to see how that goes right, I'll have to move all that in a minute anyway to show you something I may have acquired mm. I, you're very good you don't judge me even though I'm full of rubbish excuses. Just have a slurp. So that's my boxy. And the other thing I've been working on, to get rid of a bit of pattern so that's not in the way, is my blue moments. Now, I'll put the name of the designer. This is from the contrast book by Liner. And this is the colour. This is a Merino Yak and Silk from, it's, I think it's Maple, from um, Cookston Crafts, which is absolutely gorgeous. I've got six of these, and I've that's the second one I've just started. But I am at the widest point, so it's, it's a bit difficult to show you, even though it's on a 40-inch cable. I'll show you the, let's see if I can show you the, the pattern. Um, what you've what you've got? Can you see that? You've got this lovely. Bear in mind that's the the rib around the neck, so it will be might be useful if I show you the the right way round. I can't keep my hands spread. Now I am doing a size smaller than, or two sizes smaller than I actually measure the. Because I knit loose and I was a bit worried because it's lace, it will stretch quite a bit. Now the other day, my what am I wearing by the way? My city, one of my city limits jumpers. You know all about these, any um, by now. But I always put the link to what I'm wearing in the description below. Anyway, if you are interested or if you're a new viewer, I have got a couple of new viewers again. Thank you for joining me you're very welcome to sit here and listen to my wittering which indeed it is um but yeah i was thinking about what size to do it and no i didn't do a swatch because i didn't i wanted to get on with it it's quite a fine knit because it's done on three millimeter needles and it's it's growing you know and i was doing it during the day i was getting more work done on this than i was on the box say and then i tried it on thanks to this really um Gorgeous thing that Sal gave me. I've showed you. This this is sponsored by Sal, by the way. <laughs> uh, she gave me this lovely cable. It's silicon, and I showed you before. It's got a gorgeous silicon um, case that it goes in. Really, really long cable that you can transfer your <coughs> stitches onto. Now I used. Um, I put one of my tapestry com. Um, darning needles in the end of that shoved the eye end in and then picked all my stitches and I found that quite easy easier than trying to stick the end of a needle a knitting needle in <coughs> excuse me I've got the remnants of the cold but I'll talk about that in a minute not you want to hear me talking about a cold but anyway when I talk about what I've been up to so I tried it on over a city limits jumper and it fitted but it hasn't been blocked and it's going to give it's going to give a fair bit she says um it's going to give a fair bit when it's when you open the lace up i'm nearly at the armhole split split i need to go stop the video go and change my teeth and come back in i'm sorry about i've got another bruise did that yesterday but <clears throat> can you are you keeping up i'm a bit worried that it's going to be too big 
and I really don't want to put all this work in, and it is quite a lot of work to do. The lace is not yet intuitive to me because it's had all the increases in the yoke, and I can't think of a way, because I am so narrow on the shoulders but big on the bust, if it fits me on the shoulders, I'm quite happy for it to be slightly tighter on the bust because I shall probably never, ever wear it done up. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. So I'm thinking I'll get down to the split, put it back on the uh, cable and try it on again. I think I've got about an inch and a half to do um, before the, the width, the length I want it. And because all the stitches are on the needles now from, for my size or for anybody's size knitting, when you get to there, because you're at the widest point, you can make the armhole depth as big as you like now because the pattern doesn't change. You want a set number of rows of a pattern repeat. I'm finding the pattern to be easy enough to follow. Um, it does break it down into different sizes sometimes because of the different stitch counts and with the lace as a different, um, when you start off there's a different sort of, um, well, no, you're just doing different number of the pattern repeats. So it is quite easy to do. Um, and it's top down. I'm getting used to that, you know. But yeah, it's, and the wall's lovely. Now, the, the wall, the quality and the colour of the wall is a bit lost because it's lace. And I'm, I'm well aware of that because you've got, I don't know if you can see it, you can't really see it in the ball as well as you can when it's knitted up, but it's got quite a bit of tonal hint, tints, hints, glints going on. And that's making the lace look... Um, well, I don't think it's spoiling it, but I don't know whether... Until I block it, I'm not going to see whether, you know, it's the right yarn lace match i think it is i don't think it's too tonal that it's taking anything away from the lace so we'll, we'll see it all depends on what you wear it with as well doesn't it when you've got lace if you've got a nice like contrast color sometimes or a cream or whatever or, or sometimes a darker color depending on what color you're knitting in it can show the lace up a lot better can't it so i'm going to see if i can find something that's an, a nice that goes tones nicely with that like a t-shirt or something just to sit under the cardigan because i think the cardigan itself is going to look like um, a, a piece of work on its own and i don't mean that in a negative you know i think it's going to look nice on its own it doesn't need much distraction so we'll see so that's my blue moment did i tell you the name <clears throat> and uh, yeah i got now I've shown you, I'm going to get an, another inch and a half done. Try it on again without my um, jumper over the top. Because it sort of fitted with the jumper on the top and it was unblocked. I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to get any further. I'd have to undo the whole lot and then go down another size or two. That would drive me mad. And I don't want to get to the stage where I lose interest in it and just put it to one side for too long. And we all know that happens. Sorry, I'm slurping again. <clears throat> anyway. So, those are all I've been knitting on, really. I haven't... Um, I've got intentions to do other things. I've got a boombox. Because I'm a girl of the 80s. <laughs> I bought my mum a, a small... A cube one from Robert's for Christmas. Because the one that my sister and I had bought her a couple of Christmases ago it was a bit big to for to pour yeah it came out of the house so I've got that one and it's been sat now it wasn't but it's now sat in the sun and now some summer's coming I don't want it to crack so I need to make a cover for the boom box when it's not in use just like I've made one for my sewing machine and that will block the rays and it'll stop it from damaging the plastic um, and I need to get on with that fairly sharpish, really. So maybe this weekend or whatever, I'll get me bows or foam out. It makes it a bit stiffer. And then I'll be able to reach to put it on with me grabbers, put it on there. If I make it too floppy, 
<laughs> it won't land properly, won't sit on the boom box. Or, as an alternative, I could just ask my husband to come in, move the boom box, put the cover on, push it back. Ooh, which is simpler. Mm. Which route will I take? <clears throat> I am stubbornly stupid sometimes. Well, no, not sometimes. Regularly. Stop nodding, mother. I'm going to get my mum on the podcast. I think um, she said to me, I thought you said you weren't buying any more wool. And I went, yeah, but. She went, what? but what? I don't think she understands. It's not like, you know, it's not ingrained in her like it is me. Um, but she says, oh, should we go and have a look at some fabric shops? I rest my case, mama. I don't call her mama. I'm not that posh. Okay, so let's have a look at the incoming for this month, fortnight. First of all, I bought some thread. I showed you the hexes I bought last time. And I bought some thread from Wonderfill. And I'll put a link to them. They are available. I think they've got a US and a, an Australian website as well. I'm not sure. But um, it tells you online anyway. And I bought some Invisifil by them. Let me show you the name and that is by Wonderfill. Now Invisifil is a, a thin polyester and I've bought this on the recommendation of Emma Jones of Vintage Sewing Box. Oh have you seen her stuff? Um, it makes me go and look at all the pretty things and I'm not really a pretty pretty person but I keep buying pretty pretty things now. And that's where you don't want your stitches to show very much maybe but also I had a look on her website and she uses this um, Athena by Susan Smith and that's more for say a plique or if you want to do like stitching um, anything decorative around your um, around your quilt work whatever you're doing I really need to put all my EPP stuff together I'll put those in with the hexes in a bit to show you the colours in here. I've not opened this yet. But this they had um I think it's twenty or twenty five percent off. So I just took advantage of that because if you give me a percentage off then I'm possibly gonna buy off you. Why didn't I get this out first? Right, so I'm gonna show them I'm gonna show you those again. Right, so this is the Susan Smith. This is the box by Susan Smith. It's still a wonderful brand. And this is Athena, which is an extra long staple Egyptian cotton. And you get five spools, you get 150 metres. And you don't get an awful lot. I don't know if there's 150 on each one. But isn't the box pretty? Look at the inside of the box. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I bought the Snowdrop one. And it tells me on the back, I've got flax, parchment, fog, pale pink and dove grey. So I won't do them again, I'll put photographs up because I don't know whether I'm getting too much reflection being by the window. But yeah, so those are the cottons to go into or onto my EPP and I start having a go. I've got this sort of aesthetic in my head and I ordered some more cotton yesterday. Only little bits of it for um, to do some, but I really want to get sewing. I envisage I'll take my stuff outside and sew where the light's really good in the spring, you know, in the summer when it gets a bit warmer. It doesn't have to be very warm for me to sit outside and work. So yeah, so that's um, my sewing incoming. And then yesterday I went to Ikea and I bought another bowl, amongst other things. Can you hear my dog? He's being a grunt pig behind me. What you doing? Hey, eh? what are you doing, piggy? We had a ham sandwich for um, dinner and he always gets a bit of ham, obviously. No, I think he thinks the world in here is full of ham. This is ham land. It isn't. Anyway, getting back to my bowl, this is a bamboo bowl by I Ikea or Ikea, as they call themselves. And you can see how it's um, quite attractive really with all the bits in but I like it because it's very smooth always if you're gonna buy one and I'm sure when I went and had a look to buy a second one because you know my 
boxes in them, one of them over there that I just showed you that they'd gone up to about £14 but this was a tenner when I bought it yesterday and it's the same size so yeah but I'd recommend them as yarn bowls I don't know about caked yarn but I because I, I hand wind a lot of mine now you get like yeah, two balls or three or four, whatever you're doing and they sit quite nicely in the bowl without you know if I don't put them too hard they don't jump out and go over my head yeah I like those I'd recommend those to use for um, a yarn bowl especially when you see the cost of some of the yarn bowls on the market it, uh, you know they are beautiful but, um, and then finally we have I showed you the box and then I said I'd show you the following day the photograph of the uh, what's inside but I didn't because I ended up with me cold so this is the fade into spring by Emma of Yarworthy, of course. Um, I have opened it. Comes with a lovely card with the same picture on. Excuse the rustling. Let me show you. If I can hold this up right without fall, it all falling out, it'll be one of them miracle things. Right, can you see that? <laughs> It goes from yellow into green, put simply. And obviously it's a lot more um, detailed than that. I'm going to take it out now because I want to get rid of the box because it's recycling day. So this is, uh, I don't know if they've got a, word, a name actually. Have you named them ever? This is the lightest. Right, this is, <laughs> she's actually gone from the dark into the light, and that makes sense. This is number one. So it's dark, almost like a bottle green at the top, fading into a lighter green. And obviously, that's it in the skein, it'll take totally different. I've bought seven 50 grams this time. And I've bought it in Merino High Twist, 100% Merino High Twist. This is number two. So that, you can see, it's progressing quite nicely. Although, I think the greens are, are different tones to one another. But then, when you look at the middle there, they're not. So, it's just me, isn't it? You do get... I'm not being picky. I love it. But I just noticed that it looks slightly different in tone. But then you've got that there that goes with that. So, why don't I just shut up? I don't I know what I mean um, that's gorgeous so that's number two number three oh oh my idea heaven if there was one it's got brown in it there you see an introduction of the brown so that's number three four you're losing the you lost the green now more or less tiny hint of green and you get into sort of I mean although it says spring they're more sort of like a like a harvesty colour in a way but they are gorgeous and you've got to think you know the trees are coming in um, and the the yellows that you get associated with the flowers popping up and everything and then this is number five and then it's a lighter version of the last one And number six and that is it's got a little bit of orange in it a bit of peach and it's getting lighter and then finally the one I started with stupidly is this one and that's got a, a lot more peach in it and less brown and yet less dark yellow oh that's gorgeous but obviously the question is what will I make out of these that I'd like some suggestions because as much as I love them and as much as I ordered them and I want them and I own them now I don't know what to do with them <laughs> so if I can get them all in my fingers which would be remarkable but I'm going to have a go 
<coughs> Excuse me about me fog. Come on, I sang off enough as it is. Right, so yeah, we've got them. Oh. I can hold them up. What shall I do? I've got 350 grams of high twist merino that lovely that go very well from one another into you know. And I'll just get rid of the box and shut it anyway. Um so yeah, not sure what to do. So that's the postcard. Can you write on it for me and let me know what you think I should make? I don't want to make a bag or anything like that. I don't want to make a hat or a scarf. I don't want I don't know about a shawl. Oh, no, um, I've just bought, I don't know why, well, I'll tell you why. I bought the eye burst shawl pattern from Stephen West because it, they yeah, all these patterns were 25% off and I've wanted, the, the, the wall that I had for the close to you, no, comfort zone, the comfort zone, you know, that poncho I started knitting that I fogged. They're similar colours, aren't they? Because that was going to go from yellow through to um, green, but and, and purple, green and purple. But it was less speckly. I mean, I may be able to mix and match a bit of that in with. But what I wanted, I wanted a shawl that would wrap around me a bit more because they keep falling off my no my non-existent shoulders. So I'm thinking, um, and I know I could have worked it out how to put extra increases in, so you get like a half hexagon. But I saw the eye burst shawl and I thought, you know, he shows you how to do the eye cord cast on and he's always got an eye cord finish anyway. Um, but I'm going to use that. I'm going to buy it and I'm going to use it and I think I might make good use of that. Because I suspect you can just carry on and carry on until you've finished um, the shawl of, you know, what you want to make. and Make it as big or small as you want to, really. So I'm, I'm going to do that with, I might do that with this. The comfort zone had very few speckles in it so I'm going to get all the wool together and see what I think because I may have enough for a nice big jumper mm. I buy things I should know what I'm buying them for I wanted to knit the Aurora cabin shawl I bought the pattern because I really really like that because I like the look of the complexity of it. I'm, I'm not so bothered about, I don't like the round shawls, they'd be no good to me, that he's done, and some of the massive, mahoosive ones. I'm not, you know, again, they'd be just that bit too big for me. <clears throat> but um, I bought the Aurora Cabin one, and then I wrote to a lady on Etsy who had said she was gonna be back, and then she never got back in touch with me, because I was asking her about certain color combos that she got, and she said she'd do a custom order. Now she's back up on Etsy, obviously forgotten about me, or maybe <laughs> I just made it sound too complicated, which I can do, I know that. So I don't know whether to write to or not, but I think what I'm gonna do is take a few notes and go to Wonderwall and have a look and see what there is. You know, um, because I don't really want to spend money there. You know, I've got I've got an idea about what I want to make, colours I want to make it in. And people like um Andy and Ange of Attic Spin Dye and Siobhan's Crafts um, and Mothy and the Squid all do the sort of things that I'm going to be looking for and some of the others. I want a mixture of tonals and a, maybe a couple of variegated to go into that shawl. How many pairs of hands have I got? You know me, I'm always looking for the next thing. But it's important that you enjoy what you're doing at the moment and not looking too far into the future as they used to say don't wish your life away and, it, and it's a it's a very good adage to repeat to yourself sometimes so <clears throat> yes you've got any ideas what i can do and i, I might um get some i say i'm going to do this and i never do but I'm, what i'm thinking is if i ball that up and put it in with my um comfort zone stuff and i keep calling it close to you which is a different pattern. It's not even a poncho. And see how similar some of the colours are, whether I can mix and match them and add to it, then that may end up being a jumper. I don't generally like merino jumpers, not thin ones, not single ply, um, 
you know, just one like a four ply, I feel a bit flimsy for me. I damage them too easily. But certainly double dot, they seem to wear better. I'm wittering, so I'm going to stop wittering. And that's all we have to talk about knitting wise. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go through what I've been up to in the last couple of weeks. <coughs> Just after I put the last video up, I met Penny and Maggie round the corner at the pub. Um, and that was nice. We had a nice two, two and a half hours having a chat uh, about lots of things. Oh, Maggie had the most glorious colours with that. Um, Maggie does crochet now. Only crochet knitting, you know, is painful for her. And she's got the most gorgeous sets of pinks and purples that she put together and some of it she'd bought off the internet and they went together so beautifully but maggie i can't decide i can't remember whether you're doing a, a cardio jumper or, or a shawl or blankets <laughs> anyway and she's also got the most beautiful uh crochet crocheted shawl with that and i'll make a note and i'll put it on here um because I think she sent me a photo of it. Quite a distant photo. It looks much, you know, you can't see the detail. But um, if I can get it off my phone, I'll put it up and give you the details because that looked really, really nice. I might just ask her to send me another photo. And then, um, so yes, and then I took some kind lady who I won't mention her name, but gave me a large quantity of wool of DK um, last month and I took the bag that was full of brighter colours round um, unfortunately Maggie couldn't use them because her skin's got extra sensitive so Penny took them and she skinned them to a lady who knits up for children in light war zone so she does like a, a set like she'll do hat, scarves, gloves, jumper depending on how much all oh, she's got of the colours that go together and she was thrilled with the donation of wool um, so thank you very much you know who you are that's going to get put to good use I've kept the neutral ones um, and I'm thinking of doing like a nice neutral stripe one day um, and, yeah, and then of course Penny and I are going to Wonderwall very very soon and that's going to be good uh, I'm looking forward to it, really looking forward to it. And then the following weekend was Mother's Day. Um, on Mother's Day, I met my mum, went up to my mum's house. My brother Ian was there, so he got me in the house, saying my mum doing it. My nephew Alec dropped in as well. And we had a chat for a couple of hours, then I came home. Um, that was nice. And then last Wednesday, Elaine and I went to Nadex. Now Nadex is a large disability focused exhibition. I went probably about 20 years ago with Elaine. And because from what my OT was telling me, I was really looking forward to going on. I was going anyway, but I'd since applying to go, um, you get free tickets. And mine just happened to come and they were waiting for me when I got home <laughs> from there. But I'd registered Elaine after me, a day after me, or two days after me, online. But hers came about two weeks ago. Anyway, <clears throat> I don't matter, they let me in. It's held at the NEC. Oh, yeah, so my OT was saying to me that um, you can see all sorts of things there. And I was really looking at stuff to do with personal care going forward um, year on year, and also power chairs and things. So I left where I live, went up to Dudley, picked Elaine up, and we came back down to the M42 and went up round to the NEC. Now, when I've been to the two crafting shows, and we've been in those same halls, they're right at the back, halls 19 and 20, they've put us in either, um, if you're a blue badge holder, parking is free, they've put us in either um, a great big semi permanent building temporary building thing they've got there or outside it so that you're near to the hall this time we had to go right past the halls and it was a good 10 minute walk 
not not a fast walk but a good 10 minute walk from the car park and it was a, a laid out car park it wasn't wide spaces so people were parking deliberately over two spaces to ensure they had enough space at the side you know nobody minded they weren't telling you how to park um but what peeved me was that the parking that we normally park in and okay elaine and i were happy to walk you know it didn't but there'll be some people that it would knacker them before even going round the exhibition was where the other bit of disabled parking where i've been before although it's not marked out as such it's full of unregistered tesla cars hundreds of them i was like I mean, are they safe there because it's, you know, it's good security there? I don't know. I thought, that's really odd, isn't it? Why couldn't they park the Tesla cars on the car park that we used? Because it's probably out of the way. Probably doesn't have as many cameras. Because they're worth a lot of money, aren't they? So, yeah, so that was a bit disappointing, having to um, walk. But we were lucky. It was only just on the edge of being cold. And I had my... Um, cardigan on that's uh, double knitting and mohair and silk held together well my soft tweed one uh, and, and, and so I was quite warm so we went in we got registered and everything went in um, and I, I was going to take some photos or even video but it was so noisy in there it was busy and you've got people in wheelchairs going around they're all expert you know with their wheelchairs didn't crash into anybody but it's and you see some wonderful wonderful sights as in you know wheelchairs that stand you up wheelchairs that elevate you there was one man when we just got there and, I, and he was he'd elevated himself so he was the same height as the man he was with now i don't he didn't look disabled he could have been disabled obviously you know but he didn't look um disabled he might have been selling that product i don't know but that would make me kiddie it really would be you know like five foot high six foot high mm. um <clears throat> but it looked very stable because you've got a lot of weight at the bottom where you've got the the motors and, and and the batteries but yeah and then um we had a look around and then we decided to go to the loo and I went to the same, and I knew when I'd been to the craft show, I knew there was a problem with his toilet. And I thought, is there a problem with the toilet or is it just me imagining it? Anyway, we went in, we queued to go to the loo, obviously, because they did, we found a couple of other disabled toilets they put on, you know, like you see at festivals a bit later in the show. But we'd already struggled by then. I said to Elaine, can you come in with me? Because if the floor was dirty, I didn't want my trousers falling on the floor. <laughs> I mean, my, my friend Elaine's only little. <coughs> We're about, you know, she's she's not as wide as me, but so I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to stand up, turn around, sit on the loo, and I got my head in her chest because she's trying to bend over and hold me trousers off the floor. <laughs> when I was trying to do it with Liz, we had a bigger room, admittedly a bigger toilet. Uh, and I mean in her belly then, but yeah, you know, and me had nestled in in like his chest and I'd swing around and you know, and she kept, will you stop saying sorry to me? I kept saying sorry, sorry. Anyway, we managed. And I remembered the reason why I didn't like that toilet is a because it was very very small, um, and b because it was hardly big enough to be able to turn around and lock yourself in. But I couldn't reach the the system was too high for me to reach stupid is that and i should write to the nec about it yeah um but we we managed so we got out and we were still alive and we weren't damaged in any way apart from we'd had a giggle really because i think you have to look at this sort of thing and 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 uh, take it as it comes <laughs> but yes we got intimate but not in the way we was expecting or could have been i suppose <laughs> Anyway, we, uh, we had a look around, had a look at some wheelchairs, and there was a really nice looking wheelchair. And I started talking to the man about it, and he said, it's a manual, but you can get hubs that have got a motor in them on the on the wheels, you know, the push, push wheels. So you can either have a separate set of wheels that don't weigh as much for when you want to push yourself, 
or you want it to be more transportable or you can put these on and then it attaches to a joystick i look at my joystick and then drive yourself or you can i don't know whether you can use it as a an assistance to push i didn't ask him that so i said to him okay because i i'm looking at a new power chair to take in the car with me don't necessarily need one now i said how much and he went um well he said if you're looking he said it's a fairly decent manual chair something comfortable uh, it won't fall apart because you can buy chairs for such a cheap price they're really not worth the money if you're going to sit in them for more than a you know, couple of hours and then he said um and with the motor uh, and all this kit you're looking at about six grand and i kept my face straight he said of course you could spend up to 10 grand and we've got an offer on at the moment 10 percent off if you book uh, an appointment for you know a, a demo a home demo uh, he said uh, you could save 600 quid i was like well yeah that's quite a bit of a saving there's no way i'm spending six grand on a chair on two chairs effectively because and it looked really nice it was a nice well designed it looked like it had been a lot of thought had gone into the design and it looked neat and it looked you know it looked apart really and I said thank you and I wrote to them the next day and said no I didn't want a demo thanks and we looked at one chair and it was like a big captain's chair a bit like this one and you have to lift it off the pole disconnect it lift it off a pole that is sat on a single pole on the base and Elaine's trying to have a go. She said, well, I'm visually impaired and most of Anne's friends are visually impaired. So how am I going to get this back onto here? He said, well, you just fold it back down and get a ramp and just push it up. I mean, these are people selling the wheelchairs and they, he, I don't think he, he said he did demos all over the country, but he didn't really have a clue what he was talking about because unlike a lot of people, I've got an estate car, I haven't got an um, SUV thing. You know, because I couldn't get into an SUV too too high, and I did want to go and have a look at the the seat that actually comes out, lowers you, sit on it, and it picks you up and swivels you back into the car in the driving seat. But there was too big a queue to for people to have a go in it. I went to the stand twice, and there was people all around the car, and so I gave up. <coughs> I didn't even ask him how much it cost. Um, I looked at a couple of manual. Uh, uh, power chairs as well that fold differently to the one I've got um, mine you take the arms and the back off and attach it to a hoist but these they fo fold like a big buggy um, and then you get that if you can't lift them the hoist would do the work for you it'd have to be slightly altered but yeah and they were about two grand which is roughly what I don't mind paying so that was interesting and they're all very similar now. They, 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 there seems to be a trend of how the chairs are looking. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know whether somebody makes a new looking one and then they seem to be selling well so they get followed or, or what. There's a lot of folding chairs now that collapse that way instead of putting the chair up the middle of the seat so the wheels go together. It would collapse like a buggy collapses, you know, folds down on top of itself. So the back hits the seat and the seat goes into the wheels type of thing. I know what I mean. Um, so a lot of that. And we had a good chat to people. People were very nice. We shared some of our lunch with this man whose wife was in hospital. She got MS and she was having a, a bad turn and he um, had come on his own. Um, and we shared him some jammy dodgers with him. And then we saw him again about half an hour later eating somewhere else. And he just got some free food, sweet and sour chicken and rice, I think, or something from the Wiltshire, you know, the Wiltshire people who deliver to your door. Um, they had a stand there. But I'm not going to go again. And I have said to them, and I'm going to complain again to them, that there were two big areas for professionals, fine, you know, because I got in free. I didn't have to pay for parking, just pay for a ticket. But I was expecting to see far more about moving about, about personal care. You know, there were non, uh, no bathing things, no toileting things there, uh, no dressing assistance. You know, the the lady on the helping hand stand, that sounds good, doesn't it? On, on answer, answer smash, that would be a good answer smash on them. 
which is Osmond's pro quiz program. They've got a, a back push, and you can put the handle into warm water and mould it, and it'll stay like that. But it's got <laughs> it's got a brush on one side, it's got pumice on the other. So if you wanted to do different areas of you, you've got to be careful you're not scratching yourself with the pumice stone. <clears throat> and I said to her, oh, that's, you know, I like the idea of the fold, you know, the handle being bent. I said, what about, they had a, um, a foam headed one as well. Oh no, that doesn't do it. That's just a plain plastic one. I said, so it doesn't bend? She went, no. I thought, why not? Because they're still charging £12 for a bit of plastic with a foam on the end of it. Now I've seen these foam things with the white edges and I thought they were for bathroom cleaners. I've seen them in Wilco's, you know. Now, I can get a whole back bush. They're not suitable for me for three quid in Wilco. Or boot, well, boots are a bit more expensive, but yeah. So on the one hand, you're a captive market and you get charged years. Although you are allowed to claim the VAT back on a lot of things in the UK, if they specifically help you as a disabled person or they are specifically designed for a disabled person. So I, I was disappointed at the lack of range of stalls there. And unless I read up and see other people going another year, I won't bother. But I was okay. I took my strong jugs. Um, Jovi Lane, it was about 125 miles by the time I'd gone from here to pick her up and we'd gone up there and come back again and reversed everything and I was okay as soon as I get home and I start to relax then I seize up you know because I get tired but I'm glad I went we both said we we're glad we went but we won't go again so that was Nadex um, I hope you haven't fallen asleep and then yesterday I went to Ikea with my mum and my sister-in-law Naomi I got me bamboo and a couple of bits of pieces. I bought a couple of storage bags to put in possibly wool, maybe, if I can find any knocking around. I had another bit of a sort through on Sunday. I've got these, you know, to check laundry bags behind me and I wanted to check what I had in there so I could put it on Ravelry. Uh, my advent from last year in there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to buy an advent this year, but then I started looking at the camel's yarn one and she's doing mood boards and I'm thinking oh <coughs> excuse me how can I resist when I went to Nadex on that morning I woke up with a really sore throat and I thought oh I'm getting a cold classic for me for a lot of people I suppose and the next morning I had a cold just like that um and I if I'd woken up the second day and that was Nadex I wouldn't have gone because I felt far rougher on the second day but I've got better quite quickly apart from I'm oh, just a tiny little bit bunged up so but I've had a cold for absolutely yonks yeah so that's all I've done really so I've talked to you it says now one hour so I've talked to you for 20 minutes about waffle about where I've been and what I've done um, and the rest of it might have been something to do roughly with knitting got any questions yeah any ideas what to do with the Fade into spring, spring into no, can't be spring into fade. Tozy mare. Tom's going to see his mum tomorrow. It's her birthday on Sunday, and so I, me and Bert are here on our own for about seven hours. Well, not even that actually. Might be. So yeah, so we'll have fun. Uh, don't do anything else. I might put the telly on. Yeah. And that's it really. So I'm going to uh, love you and leave you, or whatever the saying is. I will see you in about a fortnight's time. Don't forget to jump along. It's very, very serious, very, very serious. Get your jump along, jumpers into their cardigans, vests, T-shirts, anything. And I might have even started a new craft next time I see you. Probably said that before. You take care. I love hearing from you. Please drop me a line, you know, get in touch. You'll often do and I love writing back to you I love hearing what you're doing and I love your pictures and your contact and I love what you're making you know it's gorgeous we can't knit all the things can we but we can have a damn good try I'll see you soon you take care bye <laughs>